Team Taser approved! Tammy, go for it. Dr. Meldrum. Yeah. Uh, the Bigfoot chick, Melissa Adair, asked, do you have a favorite Bigfoot report or story? <laughs> oh, gee. Um, you know, the one that always pops into mind when, when I'm asked something like that or I'm asked to give an example of, of you know, a credible sighting is, is Julie Davis's experience. Um, Julie Davis in, in uh, Colorado. She's an avid packer and uh, often uses goats. And she, on this trip, she had a few goats and a couple dogs with her. She was off trail, uh, off, just off of the Continental Divide Trail in southern Colorado and uh, had made camp. And anyway, to make a long story short, she came up face to face in mid-afternoon with a Sasquatch. She came out of her tent, uh, concerned that she might be being stalked by a bear uh, because of the behavior of her dogs. And when she came out with pepper spray, standing right behind her tent was this between eight foot tall Sasquatch. And they locked eyes and uh, sized one another up. And uh, she said she had this uh, uh, sort of a subliminal impression that uh, from it that it, if you don't hurt me, I won't hurt you or bother you, you know. At which point it's facial expression relaxed, and then at that point, uh, a second one, a, a smaller one, was standing immediately behind it, peering around at her from, from the side, so there are actually two of them. But I mean, here she is, she, uh, Julie has walked the entire Continental Divide Trail alone, well, with the exception of, of the company of goats and dogs. She's an avid naturalist, very well informed of, of the flora and fauna, and and a great observer, <laughs> and uh, you know when you sit across the the room or across the campfire, as, as it happened to be, and hear her recount the details and her impressions of what she saw and experienced. I mean, how do you how do you say to someone like that? Well, you just imagined it, or or you mistook something else for it, you know. I mean, she saw it or she didn't, and I and I believe that she saw what she says she saw, and 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 that can be repeated. I mean, there was one a recent one here closer to home in Idaho that I discovered uh, when the uh, Montpelier Museum put on an exhibit, and I helped them put it together and spoke there at the museum, and several people came forward. And one was was one of the doses, and he was the retired police chief, had been on a hunting trip. Uh, to the east of uh, Montpelier there up in the mountains and came around a bend in the trail and right there on the trail was the Sasquatch. Again, mid-afternoon, broad daylight. And he was just very matter-of-fact in his description of it. You know, he had his rifle swung over his shoulder. He never had a, the, the urge or the inclination to, to unshoulder his rifle, but uh, it was a, a very close and vivid encounter. You know, and so long as those kinds of experiences, those kinds of people exist, I mean, how can you just simply say, oh, this is just imagination? Unfortunately, those get swamped <laughs> sometimes by the plethora of log squatches and, and uh, uh, tree structures and, and tree knocks and, uh, and, you know, unidentified vocalizations and, and all this indirect evidence that... Uh, you know, that you always have to take with a grain of salt. Uh, I mean, whenever we're dealing with eyewitnesses, you're you're at the mercy of the of the knowledge base of that individual, um, of their powers of observation, their ability to interpret their experience, let alone their credibility. Um, so even the most genuine and sincere witness can be absolutely wrong about what they experience. And so that's why I'm always pushing for, you know, did, did you, was, was there any corroborative evidence? Was there, was there footprints? Was there hair? Was there anything? Was cat pile? Something that can be evaluated in a more objective way um, and not rely just solely on anecdotes. 
the stories that people tell where they're looking into uh, Sasquatch's eyes are definitely by far my favorite. Also, I think Steve Alcorn has a question for you, Dr. Meldrum. Okay. Yes, I do. Um, Christopher York wanted to know, of the evidence that's available uh, now, what is the most compelling that points to the existence of Sasquatch, and what would you like to see in the future? For well, evidence? yeah. Well, obviously, uh, well, for, from my perspective at this point, and, and particularly because it's most significant to me because of, because of my expertise in this area, my ability, I think, to appreciate what it is I'm seeing, that, that's the, the, the sum total of the footprint evidence. I mean, that's why this trip that I recently made to uh, Massachusetts General Hospital was, was very gratifying because it was one of the rare times I could speak to a a fairly large audience of people who could appreciate the technical interpretations and observations that, that I've made and, uh, regarding uh, the Sasquatch foot. Um, and uh, and that, that, was, that was really an amazing experience. And, and to see them, you know, see them acknowledge and see them recognize and see them become more and more impressed by that body of evidence. Obviously, short Excuse me, short of a body, it, it will be the DNA evidence that tips the scale, however. Um, yeah, and unfortunately, because of the whole Ketchum Circus, yeah. now more than ever do we need a body. Well, exactly, exactly. I'm still holding out some hope that, uh, that the, the Sykes Project isn't a wash. Uh, you know, I'm hoping that amongst them, the samples that he has received, something will be representative of, the, of those samples that we have had some confidence in based on the morphology. Um, you know, his efforts are being spread three different ways, and so I, I'm just hoping that he uh, follows through and we have some, some good results, and, and that will hopefully rise above, above the flux from a jet. <laughs> so, <laughs> his muddy is uh, kind of besmirching the waters at the present, but we'll see. So, you, of all the times that you've been out in the woods, you have not experienced anything yet have you oh oh yes yeah. no, well i've had experiences i have not seen one but i've had experience I mean, I've, I've had rocks thrown at me in places where there was no one else around to throw a rock i mean i'm quite confident of that uh, the rock throwing experience up at the snow girl lake that, that was featured on the monster quest episode and oh at that cabin experience. yes i remember at the cabin that's right uh and a similar experience it was a much larger rock was had in the Siskiyous, uh, one of the first expeditions I was participant in uh, down in the Six Rivers National Forest. Um, that was a softball-sized rock that landed just feet away from me. And I mean, it wasn't intended to harm. I think it was just intended to get our attention and to encourage us to move along. I think we were not welcome where we were at, but. Um, I've had uh, I've had things just outside my tent, you know, but, but under conditions of fog and complete, you know, total darkness at night, that uh, flashlights were almost use, useless. And, uh, but foot, footfalls and corroborated with footprints and you know, in the deep footprints, but nevertheless, 16-inch oval footprints in the grass and, and in the in along the um, effluent from the spring that were filled back in with water. Um, you know, there have been, you know, one which brushed against the tent at one time and rifled through backpacks. And so I've had things like that. Uh, I've heard one, one or two vocalizations. I've found footprints on half a dozen occasions. And oh, that reminds me, i got to ask you, thank you for bringing that up. Um, if in the event when I go squatching, which I shall be uh, going squatching for my very first time soon, can I add, now remember where this is coming from, can I add pink food coloring in the water when making the plaster um, goopy stuff, can I create a pink Bigfoot cast? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Yeah, you can add, in fact, uh, you know, sometimes I use um, mortar pigment. Uh, powdered pigment you can add to the plaster to give it a, a gray, sort of a photo gray color. You know, those those blazing white casts are very difficult to to look at and, and even more difficult to photograph. 
uh, and if you can render it down into a, an off-white or a gray, a photo gray, then you can cast shadows on it and photograph it much better. Or what I do after the fact is that, that gives it a very even tone. But I, uh, you know, if you've seen the replicas that I right. uh, make available for sale, they're uh, colored with a, a slurry of mortar pigment after the fact when the plaster is still wet and uh, or still green, not wet, but still green. And, um, uh, you know, I paint them with that and then kind of rub it on and bring on some highlights. And it just makes, it just makes the, the, the topography, the contours jump out a little more visibly um, and, and a little more aesthetically. If I'm lucky and I get a Bigfoot cast and if it's pink, I'd be like the gay Bigfoot. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, one of our friends, Lupe Mendoza. Um, who has seen a Bigfoot up in Mount Rainier, close enough to where you've seen the wrinkles on its forehead. Um, yeah. You want to know what your feelings were towards this Igor dude, that Russian guy, and the uh, Russian DNA research on the Yeti. You know, does Do you trust it, um, especially about the hoax that they recently put out for tourism? I mean, is that like part of the circus? Is this like a, an addendum to the Circus Act? What is it? Yeah. Well, I don't... Uh, uh, now, there there is... Um, if we're talking about the same thing, are we talking about the DNA or the work that was done on the hair as opposed to the anything that has been done in collaboration with Mel McKetchum? I think he's talking to all of the above. Okay. Well, I know there was there was some disinformation, unfortunately. There was a gentleman, and now he's uh, caught me flat-footed here, and his name has escaped me, but he, he got some notoriety, and it was the impression was given... The DNA analysis was conducted on the hair samples collected at the uh, Ascaya's cave there uh, that we visited at the time that we visited, and uh, and I I tried to follow up with that, and and he assured me that was not the case, that the DNA analysis was done on uh, on the hair samples that were collected several years earlier, and I can't even honestly can't even remember. I don't think there was any conclusive results. Because, or I would have remembered them. Um, I have a tendency to forget stuff that's just fluff and, uh, and just let it go out the other ear. Um, my, you know, I, I still, I still hope that I'm friends, considered to be a, a friend of, of Igor Borgel. I hate to be on any bad terms with anyone. Um, it was a disappointing trip, I have to admit, because there was such blatant exploitation of the situation and, you know, and I don't begrudge them um, utilizing the public interest in the subject to uh, you know for economic development but you need to make sure that the science remains pristine I mean it remains uh, un unadulterated you, you must have been really disappointed because you travel far for that on, on their on their time. They Still, you could have been like in Hawaii. You could have been like here with us. You know, I mean. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, I didn't. I would. Uh, I, I, yeah, I very much appreciated the opportunity to see their country. And to, I mean, they rolled out the red carpet for it. We had dinner with one of the senators. You know, the uh, I'm not sure exactly the equivalency of the offices, but one of the mafia, of the federal uh, <laughs> officers, and at this uh, very interesting. Um, Restaurant that was uh, quite uh, traditional, uh, with with traditional dishes, uh, like a hunting lodge. Hmm. Uh, we had, uh, I mean, they flew us then. Well, we, we were at the Moscow Darwin Museum and and gave brief presentations there for the press. You know, the press was swarming all over. I was very disappointed that there was no other one, no other uh, people or groups in attendance. The scientific community had zero representation. Uh, of course, unfortunately, the scheduling has put us in, in conflict with a major conference. So many of the anthropologists were tied up in uh, in a prior commitments to this conference uh, that they that they attended. But anyway, um, you know, we we were treated uh, as like VIPs throughout the, the time, and, and that put me in a very awkward position. When then, when we went to the cave, and there was clearly, uh, you know untoward behaviors uh, taking place and I was yeah. having none of it and and then of course the interviews with the press 
thankfully I had a very sympathetic reporter from Russia today and she tried not to put me on the spot too much. But uh, but it was it was very awkward, you know, that my my lack of enthusiasm was duly noted at the dinner table that evening and during the toasts and all and you, it, you uh, must have been heartbroken. Well, it just, I mean, uh, it, 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 it was disappointing, too, because Igor, unfortunately, had completely abandoned any ambition to further involve the scientific community beyond those few individuals who were already enthusiastic and had been involved for some time. He basically, uh, instead, was resorting to the government to legislate the recognition of such a population and its protection and study. And that was the idea that the Institute would be developed in order to um, promote interest in the subject. But it was interest with the express and aim of, uh, <laughs> of uh, developing and uh, promoting tourism in the region uh, as a winter resort. Well, winter and summer resort, but, but especially winter with skiing and snowmobiling and, and so on being the, the, um, the aim. And so that was unfortunate. I mean, we sat down here. They, they had the uh, Eagle wrote out uh, a declaration based on the supposed discoveries of our quote-unquote expedition, which was nothing more than a field trip. Um, to the cave and to the up, up onto the mountaintop where we had a Bird's eye view of the surrounding terrain. It was wonderful. It was a really great, uh, great experience. But uh, and and as a result of that, you know, wanted to declare that we. This is where the ninety-nine percent certain phrase that was in the press came into play, and wanted us all to sign it. Mm. And was uh, was dismayed when I refused. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, you know, this is not the way it's done. Uh, I mean, maybe the way it's done here, but I'm I'm not. Signing the declaration, I said, none of that has been vetted. It's, uh, those footprints were not compelling. The hair was um, questionable. The nest was was laughable, and uh, you know the, the coincidence of all this. I mean, it was really telling. I mean, for example, just as we're as we're we're hiking out to the site, you know, I, I noticed there were lot, there was lots of pruning that had taken place. And, trees and shrubs along the way, and I, and I asked the district magistrate, you know, who maintains this trail? He looked at me and said, what do you mean? I said, who, who maintains this trail? Keeps it clear of brush. He says, oh no, this is all wild. This is completely natural. I said, well, look, there's saw cuts right here. Someone's <laughs> out here cutting the thing, you know, cutting the branches and cutting the deadfall, and, and uh, he would have none of it. So, you know, it was that kind of of, of uh, attitude, but immediately then, you know, set, set the red flags up, and then we got to the cave, and it became all too obvious. See, that's a, that's like one of the first times we heard you call people out on their, excuse my language, bullshit. I mean, there's so much of it out there, and you spoke out, and you're like, um, no. <laughs> that was awesome. Well, yeah, Instead yeah, of being like, you know, I, I persona non grata now, and I, and I don't expect to become, to be invited back by that group, but I don't see any uh, value in returning in that capacity. I, I'm much more excited. I, mean, there's, uh, I have uh, good prospects to return to Russia this summer to uh, work in collaboration with uh, Dmitry Pirkulov, not Dmitry Bayanov, but Dmitry Pirkulov, who's a filmmaker in Moscow, a young investigator who's very interested in this subject and uh, very, uh, very intelligent, very uh, grounded. And uh, very well connected with some of the old guard, like Mary Jean Kaufman. And uh, what was most exciting, uh, and he discussed this at the, at the uh, at least the event at Moscow. He didn't accompany us down to uh, Kimarola, but uh, he uh, has been doing work for several years in the Caucasus and uh, recovered a footprint cast that was made by villagers of a. Um, you know, full 16, 16, 17 inch footprint that is in every way, shape, and form Sasquatch like. And uh, I'm hoping this summer we'll, we're going to go back and follow up with some interviews. And there supposedly is another cast and some photo snapshots of some of the footprints in the snow. 
uh, and then do some field work in that region. So that would be an interesting trip. I, uh, I'm, I'm very excited to have the opportunity to work with with Mr. Brickell. Dr. Meldrum? Yes. I'm sorry to interrupt again, but I have another question from a big fan of yours. Uh, hey. Melissa, Melissa Millspa, she's a fan, and asked, is studying Bigfoot cash your primary field? I have wondered, could the story I heard be true of a Bigfoot rescuing a hiker in trouble? They are so much like us. Is it possible they would have this type of compassion on a human? Is that a legitimate question? Sure, it's a legitimate question. I, the, the first part is, that, that is where I feel that I was able to, and, and they're uh, able to make a significant contribution and therefore focus my energies and attention was, was on the footprints to carry forward you know, some of the work that Dr. Kranz had started. Um, uh, and, and while he was a very accomplished anatomist and anthropologist, he was not an expert in foot function and, and evolutionary history uh, of the of bipedalism. Um, so that, yes, I think that's, you know, one of the things that, that, that I do, uh, you know, claim some expertise in. As far as the expression of compassion, I mean, you can go to, YouTube or wherever, and there's been some great examples of, uh, remember the boy in London who fell over the fence into the moat and the female gorilla scooped him out and cuddled him yeah. and cradled him and he was unconscious at first and, and kept the others at bay and then brought him over to the door where the keepers accessed the, the enclosure so that they could retrieve him. I mean, it was the most, uh, you know, compassionate <laughs> expression of compassion that Again, you don't have to resort to humanity to find examples of these um, human-like emotions. Uh, I mean, you don't have to exclude uh, apes and other animals. I mean, uh, what, what do you call the dog who wakes up the, his owner when the house is on fire? I mean, it's, there's all kinds of uh, examples of, of various levels of of cognition and, and emotional attachment and and or empathy that uh, <clears throat> that, that is, is uh, present. I mean, if, if studies of great apes showing that they have a sense of self, you know, they they pass the mirror test. They recognize themselves in a mirror rather than reach behind, you know, as Harry the Hendersons did. We watched that the other night. Just for the heck of it, and. Uh, uh, I, I've forgotten about that part. Uh, Harry would have certainly known that that reflection in the mirror was him and not something behind that pane of glass. And and that is integral to uh, expressions of empathy. When you understand that there's a difference between you and, and someone else, you're able to um, you're able to put yourself in someone else's position, basically. See the world from their point of view, and, and so yeah, I mean that that, that doesn't, doesn't make them more human than than ape like. I I hate I hate, hate to be a curmudgeon, but I just looked at the time. I'm five minutes late for my class. Uh oh. And, um, so the two o'clock was our deadline. We got kind of a, um, a little bit of a later start. All right, so let's say uh, goodbye. Uh, Cliff yeah. Barackman sent me a text message right now saying he sends you his best. Yeah. Great. <laughs> so thank, thank you, you so much. Program. We would love to have you back. This has been a great conversation. Okay, well, it, it would be fun. I had a good time. All right. Now go teach. Go teach.